what we need to discuss next is how the many branches in a program map to a general branch predictor structure. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm showing you in this figure. So I've designed a branch predictor that has 16,000 two-bit saturating counters, right? So I'm really extending my previous four entry example to now have 16,000 entries, right? And 16,000 is really 16,384. That is two to the power 14. So when you have two to the power 14 counters, you can potentially handle two to the power 14 different branches. But how do I map each entry to a specific branch, right? I could maybe put a tag next to each entry and say that this corresponds to branch one, this corresponds to branch two, and so on. If I did that, then the tag is actually pretty, pretty large, right? How do I define branch one? Branch one is defined by its corresponding program counter value, right? If you look at my program over here, you know, here's branch one, here's branch two. The program counter value is like, is a unique identifier for branch one. The address over here is a unique identifier for branch two and so on, right? So your address is basically an identifier for every single branch. So if I want to identify this entry as belonging to branch one, I have to store the address for branch one next to it. And this could be a fairly large value, right? This is a 32-bit value in our architecture. So basically for every two-bit entry I keep here, I'm going to keep a 32-bit entry right next to it, right? And so that makes my table really large because there are 16,000 such entries. Okay, so you know having a tag for every entry is just not practical. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at branch one, right? Branch one has a given address. It has a given 32-bit address. And the program counter is currently holding that address, right? That's the reason I fetched this particular branch instruction. So I look at that PC, the 32-bit PC value. And from that PC value, I extract 14 bits over here. Those 14 bits give me a number between zero to 16,383, right? So essentially these 14 bits over here identify an entry in this large structure. So if those 14 bits correspond to the decimal number 13,205, then I go to entry number 13,205 and that two bit counter over here is the one that's allocated to this particular branch, to branch one. And then I examine that counter value. If it says 1, 1, then I predict that the branch is going to be taken. So essentially, I'm using a portion of the program counter to indicate exactly which branch I'm executing. And that now represents my unique ID. That gives me a number between 0 and 16,383. And that tells me which counter in the branch predictor has been dedicated for my needs. Now, this is not a perfect system because you could have multiple different branches which have different addresses, right? So there could be another branch here, branch three, right? We know that branch one and branch three have different 32-bit addresses because there are different locations in the memory. But it's possible that a subset of their bits may be exactly identical, right? So the 14 bits that I'm using to index into the branch predictor, these 14 bits in branch one and branch three may be exactly the same, which means that both of these entries may end up mapping to exactly the same entry, right? So they end up sharing the same entry. And so they end up interfering with each other, right? If then one branch is taken, it starts training its counter value, which ends up upsetting the predictions that I make for branch one, right? So this interference is usually not good. And so ideally you want every branch to map to a unique location, right? But that's that's hard to guarantee. The more entries that I have in my, in my branch predictor table, the less likely that two different branches will coincidentally map to the same entry, right? So the larger the table, the less chances that I have for this kind of interference. Now, what happens when one program kind of gives up control of the CPU and the operating system does a context switch and starts executing a different program? Do I save my branch predictor entries in memory and restore those values once I come back? So most processes will not do this because that greatly increases the cost of the context switch because it takes a large amount of time to move all of these entries from the branch predictor to the memory and back again. So usually when you come back after a context switch, your branch predictor entries are initialized to whatever the previous program was doing. So essentially after every context switch, you have to retrain each of your entries so that they correspond to good and correct predictions for your own branches. So what I've described over here is kind of what 
the very first few branch predictors did. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, these things, these designs have been evolving over time. And now branch predictors are very sophisticated and have accuracies of close to 96%. What many of these branch predictors, these modern branch predictors have done is they have been very smart in terms of computing these 14 bits that index into my final table of two bit saturating counters. Right? And what I described so far, I said that just based on the branch PC, I'm going to map myself to one of these counters. So it's saying that my prediction is only based on where I am in the program. But you can make smarter decisions if you augment that information with some more knowledge about what this program has done in the recent past. Right? So in addition to looking at the branch PC, you could look at recent history saying that maybe the last 14 branches, so this is a 14-bit history, and it says that the last 14 branches have been either taken, you know, not taken, 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 not taken, not taken, taken, and so on, right? So you could keep a history of what the last 14 branches have done. And so you can take 14 bits of branch PC, you can take 14 bits of recent history, combine them, you know, maybe with an XOR or whatever, and you can combine these two pieces of information to produce a new 14-bit string which maps into some entry in this table, right? So what this table, what this entry keeps track of is what is the likely outcome for the branch given that you're executing, you know, branch n and given that the recent branches have followed a certain taken and not taken history. So this is the primary way that modern processes, you know, keep improving on their branch predictors. They're essentially augmenting the PC information with information about what neighboring branches or what that same branch has done in the recent past. A second way to improve on these predictors is to realize that different predictors are optimized for different code patterns, right? So I just mentioned that, you know, you can use branch PC to decide what entry to extract from the stable of statuary encounters. You can use branch PC plus the behavior of neighboring branches and look up a prediction structure. Or you could use the branch PC plus the history for this specific branch. Right? So forget about neighboring branches. Let's just look at what this branch has done in the recent past. And then that could look up a prediction structure and make a prediction. Right? So all of these three designs are perfectly valid designs. And each one will emerge as the best for a different code pattern. So in hardware, you can implement all of these branch predictors. And you can build a fourth predictor over here that says that given this code pattern, I predict that this guy is going to yield the best predictions. Or maybe this guy for a different branch is going to yield the best predictions, right? So you essentially have a combination of predictors and then you have a tournament predictor that tries to guess which predictor is likely to come up with the best prediction. So modern branch predictors are these complex structures that actually have multiple prediction tables and each table itself uses a complex function of the PC and recent history to decide you know, what counter to use for this particular branch and this particular history.